The Fed and Powell beware the Ides of March subsidies. Michael Every of Rebel Bank reports, central bankers are no soothsayers, and what Fed Chair Powell said did not soothe. He did not cut rates as the pink day glow frost frosted edge end of market. Fed put 101, cereal box thinking had it. And he made it clear he won't sprinkle sugar-coated mini donuts with a rate cut in March either. As hopes for March subsided, markets moved, stocks down, the US dollar up, but bond yields looked more to slightly softer data than Powell's guidance. Some think a near-term Fed cut can still be forced by a quick stab in the back, while the assassination of Caesar, 15th of March, the Ides of March, uh, Ides of, March of ancient Rome, which can fit in before the next FOMC meeting. Lo and behold, we have the falling knife of shares in New York Community Bank Roar, which had helped out Signature Bank in 2023, banking wobble, and related issues with commercial real estate. Yet the Fed has acronymic firepower that can be used instead of easing monetary policy. It can just extend its bank term funding program BTFP if needed. Clearly, the FOMC are no longer biased towards policy tightening and are looking to when it may be appropriate to loosen. However, that never meant that they were about to pour immediate large policy easing into our cereal bowls and then add chocolate milk, then sprinkle candy on top like a traditional healthy American breakfast. As our Fed watcher Philip Marley Mari puts it, forget about March. He expects at first 25 base points cut in Fed funds in June, and then a steady as she goes pace of one cut a quarter, depending on how things play out on both the econ economy and inflation, which is now partly determined geopolitically. This is uncertain process in very uncertain times. In the U.S., there is a push-me-pull-you on key data, and in terms of fiscal policy, the House just passed a, 27, a $78 billion business and child tax break bill that does not scream rate cuts. Of course, the U.S. and Canada and Mexico soon holds elections that could shake the policy box even more. In Brazil, rates were cut 50 base points to 11.25%. Argentina is... A, uh, in a mille maelstrom, sanctions might go back on Venezuela oil, and the worry is if Venezuela goes into Guyana for its oil. In the UK, data are gloomy, an election looms, the government seems doomed, yet the opposition will inherit so many problems and contradictory policy stances, it's unclear what they will be able to achieve, and the Bank of uh, England has to steer through this all. In Europe, we have disinflation and deindustrialization, and Macron, Solch, and Rutte saying Europe must rearm to help Ukraine beat Russia's war economy. This from a chancellor who did not arm Ukrainians and a PM who did not arm the Dutch. In the Middle East, we might get another Israel Hamas ceasefire and hostage release, but the view is that this will still be followed by more fighting with the risks of a, a conflict evident. And as we wait to see what the U.S. is going to do to Iran, if anything. In India, it's federal budget day ahead of a crucial election as its economy grows steadily, stocks and bonds rally, and foreign investors turn their heads towards India. In China, the Chaqing PMI was 50.8 as the CCP again skipped setting a date for the already delayed third Plenum supposed to lay out its longer-term economic plans. As local stocks shrug off the $278 billion bailout floated last week, and local media suggests foreign investors are at the back of the queue for any cash if property giant Evergrande uh, gets liquidated. And yet, even as much as the world looks like the Elmo as Satan meme parts of the market taking a lead from the U.S. president, are listening to the platitudes of Muppets and waiting for the Fed to put 101 sugar, I would be aware of them as much as the Ides and subsidies of March.
And this is on uh, Zora Hedge by Tyler Durden. It's written by Michael Every of Rabobank. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. Finally, support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.